seven in the morning. Couldn't sleep. Because I've been itching all night. You can hear from my voice. I'm a bit sick. It's all good because we are in the 964 Targa. Have it for this weekend. Just want to make use of it. but no one is selling them they are like just well kept people don't want to sell them whereas uh, cabriolets there's quite a few manuals I mean if you buy a 964 it has to be a manual right uh, Targa Targa manual I'd say is even more rare than the coupe but this one just so happens to be on sale by my friend. So I'm gonna try it out for the weekend and see. Can't decide yet. But I tell you, I am sort of in love with this car. Even though I know that it requires some loving, it requires some work to get it back up to ideal mechanical condition. Cosmetically, this car I can live with pretty clean for my standards. I have not much to complain about. Careful. And no, this video is not a review because every 964 I have driven feels different. I think these cars are getting to the age that every car They've all been taken care of by different owners and they they all have their own individual histories and so every 964 drives differently i've driven so far four 964s and every one of them is different this one i say is probably one of the most balanced ones i'm not sure if you can hear that the wind noise this is one of the downsides of the Targa roof. The removable roof is in the 
doesn't sit entirely flush on the frame of the car and so when you go around 50 or 60 miles per hour it starts making this incredibly loud wind noise I mean you could also put the roof down but not today the air is just the pollution is no good so I'm gonna slow down can hear me the audio quality is not terrible I'm also a bit low on fuel going back to this is not a review and every 964 I've driven feels different this one feels actually pretty good but it does require some work one thing I do I like to point out is Targa is based on the Cabriolet's chassis and so the rigidity even though you have this roll hoop at the back it's still compromised compared to the coupe and I don't want to sound pretentious but I do feel like the car is a bit flimsy and I don't know if that could be because of the suspension the bushings I mean it's possible I mean the bushings on this car they're they're old they're like 30 years old so maybe all of the bushings need to be changed but it does have brand new coilovers from kw so this this car is fitted with kw v1s which should be better than stock i still get the sensation that it's a bit flimsier than i like uh, that's gonna remain a hit a mystery to me but based on my experience i have driven two other cabriolets and one coupe and the coupe was by far the sharpest one even though the coupe that i drove was uh, automatic transmission the, the chassis on that car the turn in is just much dartier than uh, both the targa and the cabriolet that i drove and the coupe wasn't actually in that much of a great condition either it's never been restored i think all the bushings are probably still factory so maybe maybe the coupe is indeed that much sharper but do i feel like i'm missing out on something something that's quintessentially part of the 964 experience I would say yeah maybe I feel slightly robbed robbed of it however having a Targa has its benefits too you know you can, number one it looks pretty awesome and it's rare and number two you can put the roof down whenever you like in my current I wouldn't call it collection of cars but I don't know what else to call it I don't have a convertible or something I could put the roof so a car like this actually ticks two boxes making a sacrifice in sharpness but if I want sharpness maybe I can just drop my GT3 right so that's why you need to have many cars check all those boxes so apart from the chassis and the rigidity of this car what else the engine I must say it's healthy it's kind of annoying that the wind noise kind of drowns the engine noise which is it, it defeats the purpose of having a 964 I mean one way around it is to remove the cat to make the engine a bit vocal and of course it sounds better without the cats too it just sounds throatier and more purposeful so maybe i'll do that if i buy the car I'll remove the cats um, as i was saying i think internally this engine is probably healthy it feels all of its horsepowers i don't think not much of it is missing especially when you get to 4,000 rpm the problem though with this car is i feel like before 3008 maybe it's a 
bit lacking. And according to my friend who has driven a pristine 964, he says that the, the that 964, it feels like it has a much flatter torque curve than this. On this car, it feels like there's some kind of a flat spot or a torque dip, whatever you want to call it. And I suspect it is something to do with the engine management system. The Bosch engine management system, which you would have to probably overhaul or troubleshoot to find what's wrong. I suspect it's something to do with fueling before the before 4000 RPM. It's probably running a bit lean. That's just my guess. But there's no way of knowing until I start diagnosing it properly. However, if I do buy this car, I probably would just swap out the ECU, go standalone, change it to a TPS management, uh, TPS plus MAP, remove the airflow meter, and just modernize the entire management system of the engine. So not only will you get more horsepower, you, you save fuel, the engine burns cleaner, the engine is happier as well. Overall, it should be a win-win. One other thing I noticed relating to the engine management system is that on low loads, I mean on low RPM high loads, uh, I can hear some audible knocking, which is not good. And I suspect that is related to the engine running lean at those RPMs. Once you get past it, it pulls. Therefore, I don't think that this engine would fail the compression test. I think it would do okay. Probably would not need to rebuild the engine. Just need to work on the management system. Other things, I think they're just minor. So I notice a brake judder at high speed braking, especially maybe around 80 miles per hour. If you start braking, you feel the wheel start to wobble. That's an easy fix. You just need re resurfacing. Just now when I accelerated, it's very minimal amount of knock that I can hear. But having listing all these problems, do I still like this car? And the answer is yes. I love it. I love how it drives. It just has that quintessential Porsche and German feel from the 80s and the 90s. In some ways, I feel kind of familiar driving this in the sense that it feels somewhat similar to the BMW E34 M5. I know they're two completely different cars, but you could just tell that they're from the same era, from the same country. The inputs feel kind of similar. I mean, not the steering. The steering is day and night comparing the BMW and, and the 964. But I'm talking about like the pedal feel and the shifter feel. There is some similarity to it. Okay, let's top up and call it. I'll, I'll say goodbye for now because I need to top up gas. Look at that. Alright, goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.